with us uh, who is uh, currently working as a IPFE fellow at the Institute of Plant Protection, MNS University of Agriculture, Multan. So the topic of his, uh, today's uh, GRC seminar is insecticide resistance monitoring from smart perspective. So now I request to Dr. Mahmoud Omer Sial, please uh, start your seminar. Could you hear me, Dr. Shwebu Rahman? Dr. Shwebu Rahman, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you very much, Dr. Shwebu Rahman. Assalamu alaikum and a very good day, everyone. Well, I'm humbled and honored to have our talk about the work which I did during my PhD studies and also working here. Before I start, I would like to thank to the participants, including the respective deans, their colleagues and students. The talk would be very much fruitful for the students who are in the middle of their postgraduate research work and the, for the students who are about to start their research work. The talk is about the insecticide resistance monitoring from smart perspective. In this talk, I'll be discussing about the problem of this particular region, like the cotton region. And I will talk about the resistance monitoring what are the key factors which are involved in the development of resistance and the monitoring mechanism and what is the mechanism involved in the resistance development as well as the smart approach which we could adopt for the timely monitoring so we could particularly As we know that the main problem of this South region is the cotton and the quality production is reducing from several years. The cotton plays major role in Pakistan economy and our farmer is very much devastated and he's very much depressed because of the reduction in the yield from several years. And we do know that it is our main cash crop, but it is under attack by several insect pests. And among that insect pest, the cotton white fly, the larvae of pink ballworm are the main elements which are involved in the reduced reduction. What first option the farmers adopt is the chemical. resistance, insecticide resistance. Right now, none of insecticide is effective for this nasty insects, particularly the cotton ball worm and white fly. Just because of this pest has developed serious resistance due to inconsistent insecticides application. And just due to the application of insecticides in the environment, just to prevent the crop from the nest insects, environment has become unhealthy because there is no check and balance for the application of insecticides in the field. The farmer is applying insecticide without any rules, without any proper measurement, without any proper doses, which are recommended by the insecticide resistance action committee in this region. So to overcome this problem, early resistance monitoring is very much required. As well as besides this, new insecticide mix mixture is also required for enhanced efficacy. And if we do this, we could improve the living standard of our farmers. 
we could strengthen the insecticide industry, which is depressed recently in this region. And what poor efficacy is concerned, because every time we think that insecticide resistance is the main problem, but poor efficacy is not always due to resistance under field condition. There could be several other factors which are involved for the poor efficacy. And among them, the quality of technical grade material is concerned. The formulation of pesticide is concerned. The doses of application is concerned because we are not opting the proper doses of application. And, and the most important is the application method. What I observed in this region last year, that the former, the, the person who is, uh, uh, who is applying the pesticide in the field, he is not applying in proper way. He is not adopting the proper application method. So these are the reasons. So these are the points which are involved in the uh, development of resistance besides insecticides. To overcome, first thing is the resistance monitoring. Because if we do monitor the resistance at earliest, we could manage any kind of agriculture pest on priority basis. If we could monitor the resistance at earliest, we could prevent wastage of insecticide application. And it will also help to avoid ineffective insecticide and would make us able to proper recommendation of alternative insecticides. And if we could detect the resistance at earliest, it means we are confirming the reasons of pest control failure. We could, we could know that which insecticide is effective and which insecticide is not effective. So just because of the resistance monitoring, we could, we, we, we could adopt the rational insecticide application for the proper management of our uh, crop. Here's the resistance status uh, around the world. Uh, we could see that all the insecticide classes have developed serious resistance. Uh, the first resistance was uh, around reported at the end of 1946 in the house fly. Um, and then um, the resistance was developed in several other insecticides. We could see that uh, resistance has been developed uh, in organophosphates, in organocholerines, carbamates, pyrethroid, as well as new nicotinide insecticide, which was emerged, emerged uh, in the start of 1990s. But it, this insecticide has also developed resistance seriously. So for the resistance monitoring, um, what we should know the behind mechanism, what mechanism is basically involved in the resistance development. And, and here we will discuss about two major resistance mechanisms. The first one is the metabolic resistance and the other one is target site insensitivity because when we do apply pesticides uh, in the field and uh, each insecticide have particular mode of action in the insect body. All the insecticides, or we would say major insecticides are neurotoxic. That means they will act on the insect central nervous system. And here is the picture of the central nervous system, the synapse, the pre-synapse, the post-synapse. We could say that some insecticides do act on the synapse of sodium channels. And some insecticides do act on the post-synapse, particularly the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. This is the uh, topology of the uh, central nervous system of the insect body. The first insecticide was the organophosphates and carbamates, uh, which are involved in the resistance development just because of the acetylcholine state inhibition. And just because of that inhibition, the enzymes which were produced in the insect body have produced in very large quantity. And that enzyme is the estrases. And the other one is the uh, pyrethroid, which act on the sodium channels. They block the sodium channel and just because of that blockage, the same message or same action potential is, uh, is moved in the synapse. And just because of that, insect, uh, insect could be die. So there are several resistance mechanism uh, uh, due to the application of neonicotinide insecticides, due to the application of organophosphates, carbamates, uh, pyrethroid and organocholine. Each insecticide have particular uh, mode of action. If we talk about the metabolic resistance, 
<coughs> what is actually metabolic resistance? Uh, metabolic resistance is basically involved due to the application of organophosphates, due to the application of carbamyx and pyrethroid, as well as the neonicotinoid insecticides. What happens when these insecticides are being applied in the insect body? The insect produce enzymes which detoxify that particular insecticide. But with the passage of time, with the passage of time, the insect body produces major quantities of enzymes which reduce the uh, efficacy of the insecticide. And just because of that, uh, the insect body develops resistance. And among them, the esterases genes are involved. If we talk about the organophosphate, and carbamyx and pyrethroid, and what other is the neonicotinoid insecticide, uh, which is responsible for the uh, cytochrome P450 gene mutation, uh, gene uh, expression. The next one is the target site insensitivity. If we see the protein structure of the synapse, we can see that there are four homologous domains. This is the protein structure. And each domain has six transmembrane segments. What happened basically when we do apply the pyrethroid insecticide or organophorine, it modify the target site. Like we see that when insecticide is being applied, the major action of bonding is on the domain two of the sodium channel. And after the molecular analysis, we see that there is a shift, there is a SNP. I mean, there is a single nucleotide polymorphism shift. And just because of that SNP, the amino acid which was producing normally uh, was different. But after the application of insecticide, the producing amino acid was different. And just because of that shift, just because of this uh, uh, shifting in the amino acid, the resistance is produced. And this is the main mechanism uh, after the application of insecticides, particularly the pyrethrides. And this action was on the pre-synapse, particularly on the sodium channel. But when we do apply the neonicotinoid insecticide, their mode of action is, their mode of action is on the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. And when we do the structure of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, there are five subunits one is alpha subunit, two is alpha subunits, and three are uh, non-alpha subunit, which we, could we say beta subunit. And each subunit have again four transmembrane segments. And what happened? There are some loops on the protein structure. And, and, and in that protein structure, the resistance mutation is happening. And that is, r 81 t mutation, which means the, there is a shift of the amino acid from arginine amino acid to theronine amino acid at the position of amino acid number 81. So this amino acid moving is responsible for the resistance development in any insect body just because of the application of the neonicotinoid insecticides. Here, uh, we, uh, we will talk, I, I talk about the methods of de uh, resistance detection. There are several methods of resistance detection uh, uh, of uh, molecular resistance detection, like uh, people are using the uh, simple PCR, like the allele specific PCR. There are some kind of HOLA heated oligonucleotide ligation assays, uh, uh, high resolution melting. I mean, there are several types of resistance mutation detection equipment, but among them, a new method was the loop mediated isothermal amplification, which in short, we could say the LAMP. In this table, you can say that for the detection of resistance uh, using the PCR or other uh, real time PCR, we need the sophisticated equipment like the PCR machine. We also require the electropressis machine. We, we do need the uh, sequencing uh, facilities. But if we use this type of uh, application, which is LAMP, in this, we don't require any kind of PCR. We don't require any kind of electrophoresis analysis. And also we don't require the sequence analysis. In this methodology, we only need just a water bath. Uh, this uh, methodology have vast applications like 
if we talk about the lamp application uh, using this methodology using this technique using this smart approach we could diagnose the diseases at that time we could uh, uh, diagnose the environmental testing uh, um, in short we could uh, we can say the environmental dna uh, we could inspect our food whether the food is uh, uh, is harmful whether the food has some kind of uh, uh, intoxic toxic uh, bacteria so just because of this application we could uh, also uh, determine that particular uh, food uh, in this application uh, has been used in the genus and species specific uh, parasite detection but uh, i did focus on the resistance mutation detection because this kind of smart approach is very much required in our uh, in our area because we uh, doesn't uh, bear the we, we don't bear the uh, specificated equipment for this kind of application uh, so lamp application is uh, very much concerned for the resistance monitoring here's the, the uh, methodology like uh, uh, population is being collected for this methodology and and then the single individual or more than one individual uh, DNA will be extracted. And then after the extraction, the gene will be amplified on a single temperature. That temperature will be between 60 to 65 degrees Celsius. And then after uh, this temperature, we could automatically detect, we will be able to detect the SNP, that is, means single nucleotide polymorphism. And uh, we could see that which which amino acid was producing before and uh, what is the phenomena right now, which is responsible for the resistance development. And then we could monitor the field condition, like what insecticide has been applied in the field and uh, what insect have developed resistance. And then after timely monitoring, we could choose the rational insecticide application whether we could choose organophosphates, organophosphine, carbamix, pyrethroid, neonicotinide insecticide. And in this whole process, you can see that there is no requirement of the PCR. There is no requirement of the gel electrophoresis. <clears throat> Here are uh, some uh, pictures uh, of my research, which I did uh, during my uh, studies. Um, uh, some application in the field, some application in the uh, greenhouse. And you can see some portable equipment uh, was employed in the field. And uh, after, after one to two hours, we could see the result just using our, using our eyes. I mean, no need for the electrophoresis analysis, no need for the particular uh, lab equipment, sophisticated environment, no, no need. So here, the positive and the negative symbol. Positive symbol is showing that insect is resistance to some particular insecticide, whether it is organophosphate, organocholine, pyrethrides, carbamate. But the negative symbol, you can see that the negative symbol tube was dark, dark uh, purple, but the positive uh, symbol tube were uh, uh, light purple. So easily we can discriminate the susceptible population as well as the resistance population. And after this, we could choose the rational insecticide application. We could inform our farmers that this pesticide should not be used further. And we, we could, we could uh, tell our farmer that you must use another pesticide because that particular pesticide has developed resistance in this insect. So use another insecticide. Just it, this technique will give you the uh, results just in one to two hours in the field. So resistance management, uh, such kind of developing uh, easy to operate techniques for detecting significant level of resistance is very much mandatory for control measures. Um, because if we consider the specificity, sensitivity, and rapidity of the detection of resistance mutation in field collected population, which is very important for the resistance monitoring. Uh, and as well as for effective pest management, such kind of sport approach is very much required because it is easy to implement, it is very much cost effective. Uh, there is no technical thing uh, uh, which, uh, which cannot be uh, done by our farmers, by our extension workers. So what are the possible outcomes of this technique? 
like uh, after the application of this technique, insecticide efficacy can be enhanced up to 15 to 20%. This is the rough estimation. And uh, because if we could improve the insecticide efficacy, that means we could uh, reduce the insecticide pollution because before farmer was using uh, in improper uh, pesticide doses uh, in the field. But after this, uh, we could save the pesticides application. We could, uh, we could make our environment healthy and as well as the yield of cotton crop or any other cotton crop or any other uh, agricultural crop can be increased substantially. Former living standards can be raised significantly as well as uh, we could uh, strengthen our insecticide industry. And what will happen at the end, uh, our foreign exchange earning could be increased, which is very much uh, necessary. Uh, and uh, such kind of approach is uh, required for the for our sustainable uh, agriculture, for the proper management, uh, uh, for uh, healthy yield as well. So thank you very much. Uh, and I do appreciate for the participants. Uh, and if you have any question, you may ask. And if I could be an, any kind of assistance for any student, uh, I'll be happy to help him out. If you have any questions, Please ask. Thank you, Dr. Sir, for your nice presentation. So now the floor is open for a, any question or any comment. Dr. Sir, may I have to ask you that the lamp technique is we have to take chemical or any crop. Uh, irrespective of the crop, we can use this technique. Yes, Dr. Sahib, you can use this technique. As I said earlier, there is no doubt that the students belong to which students from which department they belong to, whether folk science, or agronomy, or soil science, or entomology, or plant building. So it depends on what you have basically experiment in the अगर आप प्लांट ब्रीडिंग के लिहाज से बात कर सकते हैं बात करते हैं तो हम किसी भी पर्टिकुलर जीन को इस टेक्निक के थ्रू एम्पलीफाई कर सकते हैं और लाइक हम अगर हम ड्रॉक स्ट्रेस जीन्स को ऑब्जर्व करना चाह रहे हैं तो हम उसको इस इस टेक्निक के थ्रू हम एम्पलीफाई कर सकते हैं सो ये टेक्निक आप यूज कर सकते हैं अगर आप इस लिहाज से बात कर रहे हैं क्यों देयर इज अ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम अटेंडी we want to ask how many bio types of white fly are present in, in Pakistan? Uh, great question. Uh, recently, uh, some bio types in Pakistan have uh, discovered, ho chuki hai, like uh, Asia 2 1 bio types have in Pakistan, some discovered hui hai, kuch Miami 1 discovered. Hui hai. Uh, but there are several bio types uh, which are uh, not described uh, yet in Pakistan. So two to three biotypes Pakistan may observe coach, but uh, is working uh, is keeper, uh, uh, particularly Mehud is keeper work around biotypes key uh, uh, identification phase key, uh, determination. Pe. So, but recently, if we talk about it, there are not many biotypes identified, nahi, like in Asia 2, 1, Asia 2, uh, 7, or Miami 1, yahan pe, uh, discover ho chuki. Okay, Dr. Sahib, there is one more question uh, from Sayyid Usama Zameer. He said that, can we send samples to check residues of pesticides on any crop? Yes, you can check. You can send. <coughs> I think he want to ask that you uh, sample to send a sample. Yes, if you want to send a sample, then I will be happy to help him. Okay. So anyone from the participant, they want to uh, comment, to do comment or want to ask, please ask the question or do comment.
especially students from plant protection who are working on pesticides or insecticide मोस्ट ऑफ दी टाइम हमें बाहर सैंपल भेजने पड़ते हैं ये यहाँ कोई इदारा है जो सीक्वेंसिंग करता हो जी यहाँ पे बिल्कुल इंस्टीट्यूट हैं जो इसके ऊपर वर्क कर रहे हैं आप लाहौर में भी कुछ इंस्टीट्यूट हैं कराची में भी हैं और इवन के यहाँ पर भी ये फैसिलिटी मुल्तान में भी प्रोवाइड की जाती है तो इट इज़ नॉट अ वेरी बिग आई मीन इशू कि आप सिक्वेंस नहीं करा सकते यहाँ पे फैसिलिटीज अवेलेबल है राइट सर थैंक यू आप अपना माइक अनम्यूट करके क्वेश्चन कर लें सॉरी सर मेरा गलती से हैंड रेज हो गया था जी किसी भी स्टूडेंट का अगर कोई क्वेश्चन हो किसी भी डिपार्टमेंट से प्लीज फील फ्री सो आई गेस देयर आर नो मोर क्वेश्चन सो एट द एंड आई वुड गिव थैंक टू डॉक्टर मोहम्मद उमर फॉर सच अ इंफॉर्मेटिव सेमिनार ऑन लैंप टेक्निक एंड दिस टेक्निक आई थिंक इज वेरी सिंपल एंड इट कैन बी यूज वेरी एफिशिएंटली in in the current scenario of pakistan as well daniel ke yeah uh, uh, dr amar mutlub uh, has written a question dr umair can you please uh, tell me yeah dr umar uh, said what is the recent scenario of insecticide resistance in pakistan are there confirmed cases yes there are confirmed cases if we are uh, talking about the white fly uh, if we are talking about the uh, pink ball worm there are cases of the resistance uh, i mean serious resistance development has been observed in this pest not in this pest i mean other uh, uh, orchard pest is also observed for the resistance development जी डॉक्टर शेख आई होप डॉक्टर अमर मतलब वुड हैव रिसीव्ड द आंसर so at the end thank you doctor for for this presentation there are no more You're questions welcome. and no more comments and with this uh, we will be signing off from from this webinar thank you thank you allah hafiz allah hafiz